So I'm Dr. Jarrett. I'm the general dentist here with Jordan Valley in Lebanon. Uh, I've been with Jordan Valley for six years now. Hi, I'm Dr. Parker. I'm a general dentist who works at the Jordan Valley Lebanon Clinic, and I'm here to talk a little bit about child oral health care. Well, I always tell parents when they get their first tooth. So with some kids, that kind of ranges some, but around six, six months, six months to a year. Um, is the uh, first time or when you should start brushing their teeth. It's actually a good idea to start wiping down your baby's gums um, even before they have teeth with a wet rag or washcloth very gently to get milk and juices off of their gums, get rid of the sugars and acids on there even before they have their first tooth. So the first dental visit should be by the child's first birthday or when their first tooth erupts. Um, a lot of time that's more for the parent's education, uh, more than the kid's actual, the, the child's actual uh, hygiene, but it's more for information for good developing good habits. So it's a little hard to tell when before kids can talk um, whether or not their teeth hurt or not. So I would say just of course, look in their mouths as you're brushing them, and of course, look for signs of discomfort when they're eating or chewing or just the aversion to eating at all because it hurts. Probably the most common would be gingivitis, so bleeding, irritated gums. Um, so that would just be red, inflamed, bleeding gums, which is just inflammation of the gum tissue. So better hygiene, brushing and flossing uh, will help prevent that. Um, obviously, if you see dark spots in the front of their teeth or in the back of their teeth, that could be an early um, decay, dental caries. Um, other than that, more severe would be uh, toothache, you know, hurts all the time, or if they get a, an abscess, which is like a bump that appears right on the gum tissue by the tooth, that uh, would be a more severe um, condition to be aware of. It depends on how long you use the pacifier for. We usually recommend to start weaning the child off around age two. They can start to cause dental and skeletal problems along with um, thumb sucking, can start to cause what we call um, buck teeth. So around age two is when we'd recommend stopping those pacifiers. So that will definitely affect uh, in a negative way um, your child's teeth. Um, I tell parents it's not that they can't ever have treats every once in a while, but it's more of a treat. It's not an every day or a all the time type thing because it can definitely get rampant dental caries. When teeth have cavities in their baby teeth, they can cause infections to the adult teeth right underneath them. And that's a permanent problem. One of the big things we see with uh, early childhood is uh, baby bottle decay. Um, and what that is, is when uh, put the uh, child to bed with a bottle of milk or a sippy of juice, um, and that bathes their, bathes their teeth all night long with carbohydrate and sugar, and it will literally cause rampant dental decay on every tooth. So um, water at bedtime is fine, but we don't recommend milk or juice or anything like that at bedtime. Obviously soda, you know, chocolate milk, that type of stuff is gonna be more uh, higher sugar, sugar amounts than the other. But uh, the more you can limit that, especially at bedtime, um, the better off your child's oral hygiene is gonna be. So I always recommend a soft bristled toothbrush. Um, we don't really recommend the stiffer, or the more or firm brushes because it can be more traumatizing to the soft tissue. And a soft bristled toothbrush is gonna remove just as much plaque and bacteria that a stiffer bristled toothbrush will. Um, we always recommend fluoride products, so fluoride toothpaste. Um, there are some good uh, fluoride mouth wrenches for kids. ACT is a good, a good option for that. Um, floss, uh, for younger kids, we usually recommend uh, like a floss holder. Um, where it, you can, it looks like a toothpick on one end and it holds a floss on the other. It's really beneficial for parents to be able to floss their child's teeth because obviously kids are not gonna have the dexterity to brush and floss typically at least till they can tie their shoes. So um, parents, if they wanna quote unquote brush their teeth, that's okay. But I always recommend parents go behind uh, them and brush and uh, floss every day. We always recommend fluoride toothpaste, the exception being if your child is not able to spit consistently because we don't want them swallowing fluoride toothpaste um, twice a day. Um, but uh, until they can spit, I always recommend a training toothpaste. And then every other day you can use a fluoride toothpaste, but a small amount. So we call it a smear layer. It's less than a pea size um, where you can put on the toothbrush. So they're still getting some fluoride, but they're not ingesting that twice a day. For everybody, whether you're a kid or you're 80 years old, brushing two minutes is the ideal time. So we recommend brushing two minutes in the morning and then two minutes before bedtime. Um, as far as technique, uh, we try to rec don't recommend side to side. We usually recommend up and down or small circles. 
um, kind of for the same reason before is it can be more traumatizing to the soft tissue um, to get real aggressive with your brushing. So try to go up and down in small circles. Teeth are important, whether they're adult teeth or baby teeth. And if they have cavities, they can become infected. And those infections aren't just localized to your mouth, they can travel all around the body. So brushing and flossing every day is important for kids and adults. Prevention is always the simplest route. I know uh, there's a lot of anxiety that patients can develop from visiting a dental office. And a lot of times with that, and my experience has been to uh, patients that have treatment needs that are pretty advanced, pretty significant needs, and that kind of develops into a more of a dental phobia or fear, especially in young kids' child childhood. Um, but prevention is always going to be the easiest, going to be the less traumatic, and the, the, the best way to go.